Hello, this is Gata7, and today we are going to show you how to use the new Miyamoto release. Now, this is a very different setup than a lot of previous Miyamoto tutorials because a lot has changed for the editor, so of course, you're going to need to download the zip file. So, I'll just let that download. And then you're going to need data.zip and you're going to need to download the objects if, if you don't already have them and you may also need this randomized objects does it And yes, this should be it. So I'm just going to wait for all these things to download. And once I do, I'm going to come right back. Alright, now you can see that I have all the files downloaded. So first thing we're going to need to do is extract the Miyamoto file here. All right, so now, and okay, there we go. So I'm just going to name this Miyamoto for simplicity. Next thing you're going to need to do is extract data.zip. Now once that's done, you hit control X and put it in the Miyamoto folder. Then we're going to move on to the objects.zip. Then also the randomized objects. All right, the objects have finished extracting, so I'm just going to paste in the random objects. And if you ever have a conflict, you want to hit replace. All right, now once that finishes, we should be good to go. You need to control X this and put it into Miyamoto. Now with that being said, you should now be able to run Miyamoto.exe. And here you need to browse for your new Super Mario Bros. U extracted stage folders. I'm not going to exactly tell you how to get it, but you won't have to figure that out on your own. Ah, it's the course res pack folder. Okay, now we'll ask you for the path that controls the contains the objects. So you're going to go to the folder you have, Miyamoto, and objects. Then with that being done, it should start up. Well, first it's going to ask you to load a level archive first and once again you want to go to where your extracted folders are content common course res pack I'm just going to do 1-1.scs those CMDs that pop up are for to decompress the textures so let me first go over some of the new features here so you can see that we still have the palette we have the sprites and if you don't know how to use these things uh, look at the Miyamoto tutorial one where I go over all these features and now I'm going to go over this it's always good to have always resave the tile sets it is said that you don't need to have this enabled, but I recommend you have this enabled just in case something goes wrong with the tile sets, you would be able to enable them. You can also edit the different slots of tile sets using like you were able to in earlier versions of Miyamoto. So you can edit the tile sets here. 
I'm not going to mess with those, though. Anyways, let's go over some sprites, or options here. So, a couple of things that are new are the change paths, which are very self-explanatory. But I'm going to go into the preferences, and you can change the compression level now when you look at this. And you can also see the recent files data. Now I'm going to go into the themes because these are new. You can, are now able to change the theme successfully. Like if I want the RVolution Red. Then I would restart Miyamoto. And then I would now have the RVolution Red theme. All right. And there seems to be a problem when it loaded the tile sets here. I'm not sure what the problem is, but I don't know. I'll have to, maybe it has to do with the theme, maybe it doesn't, but I'm just going to set it to classic and restart because I want to show Miyamoto using its default theme. Alright, now that we're back here, you can see that you can also edit some path nodes the Nabbit path nodes and their actions, which basically kind of tell Nabbit what to do when he goes through the path nodes. So yeah, then there's the Nabbit sprite, you could choose the values, yay. So, and with some more things. Now, when it says don't overwrite sprites in the level archives, let me explain what this option does. In the data folder, you have all these sprites, and if you disable this all or disable this, the don't overwrite sprites, it will use these sprites in the data folder over the one that currently exists, meaning that you can essentially edit some of the sprites in the game that will be saved. So that's a cool thing to know. Now I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering how to, what this thing is now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to just, not going to add a preset, just going to add one. And I'm going to name it Dummy. Because this is going to be my test dummy. So I'm going to make a preset using this overworld tile set here. So just going to have that as the top of the grass. This says the middle. This says the left. This says the right. Or actually, no, it's good to have the one block grass as the preset if I can find that. Does that even exist? No, I don't think so. Well, if we run into problems, we'll have to do something different. Nothing bad. Basically, you fill in the tiles that you will want would want to make this platform look normal. So, just kind of have to look a little bit. If you don't see the tile of your dreams, you can always go at it. Like see, oh, I don't know where to find this bottom tile set. Then you just kind of have to look through here. Like see, see this one right here? Hey, I found it. And uh, let me see if there's the one block overworld that exists. Or if it's present. not seeing it at the moment. 
But if we run into problems, like I said, we'd be able, now we can go back to in the embedded tab and find our bottom one right here. Okay, now we need to fill in this little guy. So what we're going to do here is put in this tile, then look for all the other tiles that match. Once again, if you don't find them in the current tile set, you'll have to look through the All tab, or even make one yourself. Anyways, you can see that we've had, we've made the tile set. Now, let me try and paint a level. Let's say we want to make it go up like that. Just a slope here. I'm just doing a bunch of weird structures to play around with it. And of course you can always add to this too, like if I want to make this all land. And it'll do all the work for you. Of course some things may not end up perfect because it can't always make something good of what you get it with what you give it because it would be impossible. But the erased also does something similar. You can poke holes in things. Basically you erase. And it'll do all the math for you and all that. And yeah, it's a pretty neat thing. They'll help you get levels done more quickly. Of course, you need to add your slopes like Let me just deselect the erase and select this normal slope and just draw one like that. Of course you would still need to do things like that because you want to make levels look good and not make bad Mario Maker looking levels. Once again, if you don't feel see the tile set you want, you just look for it. As simple as that. These will display all the tile sets in the game, and you can add your own too, if you know how to. And these will, you can import an object file, and look into objects and import any of those here. Like say I want to import one there, hey, and now I can use this object, which is pretty cool. This will also let you know when you run out of tile sets you can use or objects or whatever and you can also export all of them to a folder or you can just hit delete all I'm just going to not do that though because I don't want to delete all the objects and delete all will delete all the objects that are not used in your level so I'm going to hit yet and they'll delete some from the embedded tab that are not needed now you can save export level as if you're not going to use your level for the Wii U save it as an S arc but to use it with the Wii U you need to save it as an SCS why I say usually use S arc is because it's uncompressed and it's a lot quicker to save the only difference is it takes a lot longer it takes up more bytes and SCS just takes forever to export but if you're not worried about space just use SARC but you have to use SCS to finalize things now I explained how all well these work now you know how this quick paint tool works and yeah most of the things here are really the same you can also see tile set collisions which tell you how Mario interacts with things like those are blocks you can jump up through the green ones are solid the black ones have no definition and there's also tile set animations where you can see things like coin blocks or brick blocks animate the only thing is it makes the editor a bit laggier like see, you see the coins animate, you see those animate. If I just get like a random mystery block, you can see, hey, it starts animating. Although, 
power of mystery box won't animate because you kind of need to see what's inside of it. So that, those are cool if you want to see them, although it lags the editor, so don't do that if you're worried about space. Anyways, there's not much to explain other than all of those. You kind of have to figure out how to make your own sprites if you want to do that. And uh, let me explain something about these all tab. This grabs things from the the objects from the folder. You can always rename those if you want, which I recommend doing. Like C level one overworld. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to rename, but yeah, you can rename all this stuff. They're sorted. They're a pain to get through, but if you just look for them. They're not too hard to find out. And, uh, yeah, some may take a while, while to load. But, yeah, you can basically paint it, save it, and it'll just show up in game. I hope this tutorial has helped demonstrate to you the new features of Miyamoto. And I'll see you all later.